Here's Calgary goalie coach David Marcoux and the breakaway. David. Well, on the breakaway, uh, and it is happening more and more in the NHL, we get a lot more of these situations. What we want to do, we want to be thinking of the Y theory instead of the T theory. This is the Y. So as the play's at the other end, we are deep in our net. Okay? Once we do see a breakaway, we want to move out at the top of the stick length here, maybe four feet away, and start backing up on the same stick. In the area where all the sticks are, we want to stay in a good position. We want to stay up at the top of our crease to challenge. If the player does want to shoot, we are in a good position. We're not backing in too far, too far in where the player can shoot and just have a lot of openings. How do you decide when to telescope back? I mean, do you base it on the speed of the forward attacking? What, what's your cue? Absolutely. There's two things. Why we move out is for two reasons. We are moving out to present a big picture to the shooter, and second of all, to get that momentum backwards. So the play is developing a lot slower than if you are in a static position at the top of your crease. The other important thing is also, once you are at the top of your crease, you can force the player to deke by staying up. Once he does decide to deke, we have to slide backwards. We have that backward motion going to the post on one stick or on the other stick, depending on the side of his deke. But to force the player to deke, we have to stay up in the area, in the center area. Go, out, in, challenge, slide. Stop, don't move. The other important factor is to make sure that our skate is not ending up inside of the net. We want to be in a good position to make sure that everything is on the ice and the skate is outside to cover also the upper part of the net. If the player does zeke, our skate is outside here, then our shoulder can make a save up top. You can log on to cbc.ca. Big hockey. Oh!